Hello everyone. My name is Malkane. I'm here to play some games with you. So, funny little nuance to the game. If you click anywhere on the screen, um, it kind of takes you there immediately without any kind of confirmation. Uh, so that has uh, kind of fooled me a couple times. Uh, so that's one reason why the date's kind of gone forward. We have some less fuel. But hey, we're here. We're back. Um, we are back playing Star Trader Frontiers. So, uh, in the break, I went and went ahead and kind of did my crew. Upgraded everybody. I'll walk through real fast what my thoughts were. Um, so, on the captain, uh, he actually starts with an extra um, an extra uh, job rank you can take. He started out Smuggler 2. I added Spy. This was important for me because I wanted to make sure I grabbed a couple extra stealth. That's a was worth plus two stealth for me. You can actually see here. Um, so, Spy is plus two stealth, plus one electronics. Those are both good for us. Uh, pistols, I don't see him using a whole lot, but the stealth here, Spy's the one class, the one job that gets you real stealth points in a serious way. Smuggler also gives you stealth. These are the only two classes, the only two jobs the entire game that give you stealth. Uh, but Spy gets almost twice as much as Smuggler does in general. So we'll be going back and forth between these two a fair amount. Um, that's one reason with that. So we'll kind of go through real fast and look at what he has going on. Um, so you can see here, the parentheses means that in certain situations we get those. In this case, because it's the captain, we always get those. These are the skills I started with in the beginning. So we'll always have the 8 negotiate, that 5 explore, the 8 stealth. That'll help us pretty heavily going forward for this first time. Um, for the equip, we don't have anything right now to really help us. Uh, this is all the basic stuff. Uh, there's no nothing we can do with this quite yet but uh, so we, we might go through that later uh, we actually can choose some eyewear i will grab some glasses i think those look pretty cool so i will go ahead and do that i don't really like the armbands they have chosen for us do one of the three um now i'm not sure how they chose those three to kind of do i think that one right there is either the sign of the uh the Arbiters or Independence in general. I'm not exactly sure which, but anyway, that's the kind of the visual screen. We'll go through whenever we get people who want to kind of take on character names themselves. We can choose the face, choose the uniform, even choose the name if you want to. Uh, you can do all that here. So there's something to think, think about. You have that in mind. The job screen over here kind of goes through each job you have. You'll notice there's a lot more than eight we had starting up. That's because there's a lot more jobs you can take after the fact that it wouldn't let you kind of start with. Uh, the ones you start with are just, I think, a little more suited to a player character in general, but it goes both ways, so. And um, you have your talents. So an important side note, the jobs unlock talents you can take. You get a certain number of talent points and you can retrain them. Uh, so that is an important thing to keep in mind. You can see here we have our, our spy um, talents and our smuggler talents. I went ahead and chose um, Espionage Sweep and Cunning Slip. Cunning Slip lets us automatically pass any t a stealth test we fail in any situation, which is really powerful. It's basically a get out of jail free card. And you'll see my philosophy on Impossible going forward is having a, as many of these as possible that just let us pass tests. It's once every three weeks, so you can't do it constantly. But having a lot of those helps so much to keep everything kind of going strong as the game progresses. Um, for Espionage Sweep, we'll get into a mini game at some point, either this episode or next. Probably next, we'll see. Uh, where we are spying the orbit of the system. And you'll see what it means by removing a risk card. But for us, this increases the odds of success. And I like that a lot. So that's kind of those um, gone out. So we have the various, various people. And the next three are officers. Uh, we talked to, talk to them earlier. We, of course, have Logan Cassius, Cassius uh, Klaus Soleimani, and Spot Seath. Um, they all started. Uh, so Logan was a doctor. Klaus was an engineer. And Spot was a quartermaster. Um, like the captain, I went ahead and separated out what they're doing. That gives us access to more talents, as well as just in, kind of spreads out their, uh, their bonuses. You can get up to three class or up to three job jobs per officer or your captain your your junior crew can't differentiate like that so so getting a, a bigger spread for the talents on your officers 
and your captain make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so uh, you can see here Logan automatically passes a failed doctor test in a situation, which is important for us. Uh, Klaus automatically passes a repair test, and Spot automatically passes a command test. So again, that's kind of the philosophy. Actually, you start with these chosen for you for a good reason. Um, but that is something that I am continuing to keep with as we kind of go forward. Now for the rest of the crew, uh, just kind of going very quickly through them. For the vast majority of these, especially the ones that are the more ship dog esque type ones, the ones who are the engineers, the, uh, the, the repair ops, that kind of stuff. I almost always did choose talentless pass failed tests, like pass failed ship ops. Um, this is one of the uh, fighters. We'll get into fighting later on. Another fighter. Um, this one, I'm going to pass field navigation, and so on and so forth. So, there's a number of things kind of going on here. And I'm sure as we go, go through them more, we will learn more about them. Uh, here's an uh, interesting one I kind of do want to point out. Uh, sure landfall. Uh, it lets us land on planets at half the time it takes to land there and reduces fuel cost to one instead of the standard, I think it's 15, maybe 14 or 15 to land there. So uh, every three weeks we can land for a lot less fuel. And again, it, it isn't huge by itself, but it adds up over time quite a bit. Otherwise we have a couple other cool ones. Um, when attempting to access a black market, we can remove risk cards similar to the orbital one with spying. This makes it easier for us to get into the black market. Yes, it does take a mini game um, to get into the black market, and it adds a bit of risk to that as as an overall thing. So, we may want to make sure that we have everything kind of figured out. Uh, there's some other small ones on here, but for the most part, you'll see that it's going to be automatically passing tests. pilot test um, and when we get into combat itself I'll kind of go over what the other ones are but for now we're just gonna go ahead and hop into the mission itself um, I guess one last thing before we we hop into the mission this screen kind of shows us how many officers we have so it's myself uh, the captain plus the four or three other officers we have 19 of the 24 potential crew so I could hire up to five more guys and we will um, and here you can see that the skill points, the points we have towards each of these things, uh, I have 12 pilot points out of 11, 25 ship ops out of 19, and so on. You can see here that it actually does go above 100%. That's gonna be important for us because of the way, of the way rolls work. So at 100%, you are getting, you're considered staffed in that area. You need at least 100% for all these, because if you don't, it makes it much harder to to use these skills when a, a skill check comes up. So a skill check, when you roll these, you basically take this number, um, it's gonna be one of these, you roll this many dice. And as you roll that many dice, this tells you how many successes you have to get based on a certain number. Now, if this is below 100%, that number you have to roll uh, on a, a 10-sided dice, that number you have to roll is an eight, nine, or a 10 to get a success. That makes it very difficult. But if you have over this, then you get 11 what are called strong dice. And these strong dice have to get a six or higher to succeed. Uh, anything past that's gonna be a weak dice. Now there's a maximum for this though. You can see here for our electronics, we're at 22 out of 11. When you've doubled this number, you're at 200%, you only get that many total. So if I went over this, I was at 205 or whatever. Um, if I had 23 out of 11 right here, I get 11 strong dice, 11 weak dice, and then that extra one, that, that 23rd potential dice, will be totally just worthless for us right then. So you can see why it'd be really useful to, to keep this in a good spot. Um, and you can increase these by increasing the stats of your ship. I have a pretty bad ship right now, so these are all fairly small. As we upgrade, we will see these get better. In addition to that, um, so that's kind of how the, the checks work for those, that kind of big dice. Um, or uh, sorry, that kind of strong dice versus weak dice, that's how that works for those standardized checks. You also have what are called big dice checks. And big dice is where you take one of the captain's attributes we talked about earlier, add that to your overall stat for these various things. So 
we have these various additions to it. So you can see here, like, stealth is 3 plus 5 is 8. Uh, and I believe this only counts ones that you actually do get in those situations. But you add the, um, the attribute plus this ranking, and then you roll a dice that's that many sides. So for example, if I had my wisdom, which is 33, and I added that to my negotiate, which is now 11, that would be a 44-sided dice I'm rolling, and that kind of determines, based on a challenge rating the game sets before you, what happens. And so you also have, in some cases, this um, this opposing dice. So the, the game will roll against you, either a big dice or strong weak dice, and will compare successes, or compare which is higher, whether it's strong, weak, or big, and that will determine how well you do on things. So for the big dice, you wanna make sure you get as high number as possible, but you can always do poorly on those because it's a one, two, whatever that high number is. Um, whereas for the others, you wanna have as many of these as possible because every added strong dice gives you a much stronger chance to succeed, have a success against a set number of successes. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that kind of is pretty intuitive to understand. Um, it reminds me kind of of, in a way, it's kind of like Shadowrun again, in that these count successes, um, again, it's a little bit different because Shadowrun, it's only the one die, it's not a strong or weak, but still, I think that it, it, it's pretty fluid. Um, I, I didn't get it quite as much the first couple times I was playing, and as actually we'll go to the map and I'll show you. Um, so as you're just flying through space, you get these tests. And I hadn't done anything yet for my skills when I clicked away and immediately got a failed tactics test, which we got, we rolled five strong and got that one. And the world rolled three strong. This is like the, the game and plus 10. I think this, this might be weeks. Um, or maybe this is how many successes I got on the five. And we get a bonus on that based on, I think, what the tactics are. Maybe that's what it was. Tactics. Maybe that just gets added immediately. Admin or not, I'm not really sure. So ship ops, it's plus five. So ship ops. I admit that I don't know right now. Um, but regardless, you can see we rolled this many successes that helped us win. So um, maybe this is 19 versus the eight and it's 11 versus the five. So, however it worked, we, we've passed two and failed one, and just gonna get these going forward. It'll kind of sort of explain to you what's happening, but uh, the results of these actually aren't as apparent. Um, but things that are worthy of your attention will pop up here, and you can kind of see them. So, with all this talking, uh, I, I meant to kind of get into the game itself a little bit. Um, we are heading to, I believe it is, right here. So we are heading to that one we need to get to, to pick her up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and head that way. Uh, we're a bit lower on fuel than I'd like right now, but we can get that later. Um, so failed intimidation, you see here that something happened. Here's a great example though. Uh, attentive overhaul talent saved us even though we would have failed a repair test. And repair can be bad because it can really mess up not only your stuff, your, um, your components of your ship, but also it can um, uh, hurt your crew. So any of these you fail, I don't know the full extent of failing intimidation tests, um, but a lot of these like navigation, repair, ship ops, doctor, can really hurt us and, or our crew as we kind of go forward. So we've landed, we've come to uh, Xenu, uh, which is a large oceanic world with standard Atmo. Uh, so we're gonna land in Zerkrom. We're gonna pick up our our contact here, Estella. So we'll land, we immediately go into a discussion with her. Many welcome, Star Trader. Arbiter Estelle Buckstrom is in honor. Indeed, Captain Callaghan Fane promised me he had dispatched a new but promising young, new but promising Star Trader captain to pick me up. It's strange that it kind of, I'm getting some weirdness with my mouse right now, I think. Um, I understand you have recently come into ownership of your Star Trader's charter. That is the truth. My great uncle perished during an exploration expedition last year. 
I was picked from among my house to take over the charter and ply the stars. Then you know the magnitude of both the responsibility and the opportunity that now rests on your shoulders. Caligan has asked that you personally escort me to his court. Prince Fane is impressed with your potential. He knows that your name will become legendary in your service of Steel Song. All right. So, um, we have some options here. Uh, you'll have to find someone else. If the money were right, I'm sure we could cut a deal. Your flattery won't take you very far from the Arbiter, and Prince Fane's trust is well-founded. I think for this, smoothing's going to be uh, kind of our, our first choice. We want to make sure we get contacts, and that makes means making both Estelle and Prince Fane happy. Uh, there will be a way to quickly shore up the choices we made earlier about the contacts we had. So, let's go and go with this one. See? That is ple pleasing to hear. Caligan has always been a superb judge of character. I am sure there will be more work waiting for you at the Prince's Court. Good. Perfect. And, uh, let's... It's kind of, what work were you doing? As an arbiter, I have a roving hand of Shailun Law. When legal cases or disputes are extremely complicated, I am often called in. Or, in this case, something very dangerous. A factory in this faction holding was caught producing highly illegal substances, large-scale weaponized nerve toxins. I was assigned by the Senate to oversee their destruction. I can see why. With something that valuable and dangerous, you'd worry the substances will be quietly sold on the black market while being reported as destroyed. Exactly. Having an arbiter land on hand, on hand ensured no such mistakes were made. Who was creating the bioweapons? Figuring that out is in someone else's hands. But there are concerns that the Shilagorath cult might be involved, or the Indian revolutionary group called the Hana. And I'm guessing both of them make an appearance later. All right, let's talk specifics. I need passage to the court of Prince Fane, direct passage, as I am in a hurry. I will offer a flat fee of 10,000 credits for the passage. It is better money than you would get elsewhere for the intra quadrant travel. What do you say? Um, I say absolutely. Uh, we only got because we started at a um, impossible level. We only have 2,500. This is four times our total wealth right now. And we're going to have to spend some to buy um, gas by fuel. So we have even less <laughs> right now. Excellent. I'll join you shortly in the starport. I will pay you promptly on our arrival at Caligan's World. We've accepted a mission on behalf of Arbiter Boxstrom. Brockstrom. We should finish any business we have in this zone and then plot a course using the missions list. All right. You see our crew kind of has some comments to make up here. Um, so first, we do need fuel. Uh, $13 going rate. Um, take half a day to do this. We will refuel entirely, which is going to be almost four, over 40% of our total money. Kind of sucks, but being fuel dead would suck more. Uh, repair. Our hyperdrive is hurt. We'll go and repair that too. It took three days. We still have time. No problem. Uh, space Hall... We don't have any wages to pay yet. You pay every 30 days. Um, recruits, we can get some more people. I think that'll make make sense for us. So we need ship ops. Uh, we need um, pilot and navigation. Gunnery won't be as important because right now we're gonna probably run away from every fight we get into. If we get into fights, we are, we are hurt. We have a terrible ship for fighting, so. We do not want fights. Um, so here we can get a pilot, pilot and navigation skills will be perfect. So we'll recruit one. Um, and maybe even recruit, recruit a second one. And do we want ship ops or navigation? So we could do ship ops and gunnery. Which probably wouldn't hurt us. It also adds the admin for repair, which is super helpful as well. So, I will grab a crew dog. It puts us at 22 of our 24 crew. Um, we are now at. Well, navigation's still a little bit lower than I'd like, but that'll be fine. Um, and then no one's at low morale, so we don't have to worry about um, paying to kind of increase anyone's ideas. We do have some people who are fairly hurt, thanks to probably like the Intimidation Fail or something like that. Maybe there's a Brawl on board, something along those lines. But this visit will require hours. We'll go ahead and heal. We have the money for it. I don't like people kind of sitting around hurt. 
I don't know. It makes sense that we'd go ahead and do that. We're still not hurting for time at all, so that'll be okay. Um, wow, well, already at 20 minutes. Okay, so we shall last things. Uh, status crew. I'll go ahead and level up the people who need to be leveled. There is a filter up here, which is really nice. So these are our three new people, two pilots and a crew dog. Let's go ahead and look. We have talents we can select. We have these talents. Um, what we can do, actually, which I think will be nice because we don't have it quite yet, we can take sharp steering, which when we play this in a combat situation, gives us an escape for three turns, which could be really helpful to get us out of a bind quickly. We don't have this yet, so I'll learn that. Next, um, so we already have two members who know or who can do fail pilot tests. We have one that has that sure landfall like I mentioned earlier this, this episode. Um, I think that because we might be less than three weeks between two worlds, doing this twice just ensures we spend less fuel as we have to to land between worlds. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And finally for the, the ship dog, we have two members who have ship ops. Um, we have one member who has this, which increases morale bonus from the, the spice plate in the hall. We aren't going to patrol a whole lot. That kind of leads us to more combat than we want. We won't want that. And fail safe, while this could be super helpful in combat, we really don't want to get in combat at all. So, I am thinking we'll just do another ship ops, just in case. Having a failure every week would be really bad luck. Or having a, yeah, a failure every three would be a bad luck, but this just ensures and guards against this happening and really hurting our day. So that takes care of that. Go back. No crew that are need training. Uh, no crew are injured. And you can do, just kind of look around and see what you can do. All right. So with that, uh, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and finish that real fast. Estelle. I've noticed your officers and crew giving me sideways looks since I settled in here. As I Zen do, I'm used to it. But perhaps I can answer some questions to help study your people. So you can see here we have some options. Um, let's see. It is not very easy to impress this lot. My crew is. Um, yeah, they're they're pretty. They've seen it all. We're we're hard, hard uh, smugglers. It happens. I'm not surprised they failed to impress. I'm a stern older woman and looks nothing more. You do not give yourself credit, Arbiter. Your very presence carries weight. But I'm not stronger, faster, or larger than other women. What makes my Zindu kind special is not physical power. It is their access to our genetic memories, Captain. Um, how far can you look back in your memories? So, she didn't go into much detail right here, but um, they have the ability to kind of go back. They get these flashes of inspiration, we'll learn here. That's one reason that the Zendu, the Zendu Templar, the Zendu Arbiters, and uh, the Zendu... There's a third type that we can ask about this. We'll mind do that here in a bit. It is never easy to explain lineage memories to those not of Zendu blood. You did offer to answer questions. I'd be interested to hear you try. I don't remember a time before the memories. They start when we Zendu are young. We strengthen our recall through meditation, pattern exercise, and ritual. There are the conscious muscle memories, always guiding my hand or step, and there are visual re remembrances and voices that come forward of their own accord. Trying to consciously look back, seeking something is difficult. Digging for something, even trying to remember the Guild War, for example. That could be even dangerous. My lineage is always there. Um, are there many left? Not many. The Arbiters have spread few, working across many quadrants. There have never been many Augurs. Um, they serve in the Great Courts of the High pr Princes. The Augurs, that's what I was forgetting about. And the knights, which are the most famous ones from the wars, they have long borne the brunt of the troubles of our people. They were always on the front lines of the Guild War. After the Exodus, they bled to protect the new colonies. But perhaps the Alzean campaign cost them the most. Now it's time to rebuild if the Quadrants could only find a moment of peace. Alright. You're going to help Prince Vane? I'm going to ensure that Shailun Shay Law is followed to the letter. I thought you said you and Caligan were longtime friends. Do not get the wrong idea, Captain. I am not going to Calgon's court. Trade in favors. My sole responsibility is to enforce the law of our prophet, Shailun, as documented in the Accords. May the flag watch over his grave. Alright, we have important work to be doing. We'll get you there promptly. Alright, we are going to go ahead and call this episode right here. We're 25 minutes in. Uh, this will be a great place. We've 
taking a bit longer than I think I would have preferred, but it'll be fine. Go ahead and get a waypoint right here. And that is gonna be, is that it? Kiori uh, Beta, you can see we have the, the mission emblem, so I believe that's it, it's the only one we could have. So this will be where we go to see the prints, right there. And we will do that next time. So, as always, have a great time, have a great night, have a great day, whatever time you're listening to this. And, as always, before all else, continue to game on.